Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the Girardian Virtual Bible Study. This is for the fourth Sunday of Easter, and it is called Good Shepherd Sunday, and it's also Mother's Day. So, Lindsay, happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day to your wife. And I thought you were just going to be bold and say happy Mother's Day to you, too. Well, I hope I hope that as a there have been many men in my life who have been mother figures to me Mm. and have have mothered me and loved me as a as a mother uh, does and or should I guess that's one of the things that's really hard about Mother's Day is like you want to celebrate moms at church Mm -hmm. and it's just you can't like avoid Mother's Day because it's huge in our culture but it's also like really painful for a lot of people like Mother's Day for example is always a reminder that my mom died about 20 years ago and so how do you like celebrate moms but also give space for grief Yeah. Yeah, that's that's hard and um well well blessings on you and your <laughs> mother, Adam. I I mean <laughs> Yes, well, yes. So so my original point was since my mother died, there have been many people who have come into my life and have uh been a mother like figure to me and some of those people have been men. And mm-hmm. uh I I hope that in certain ways that I have been a mother figure to some people as well. In fact, there's like, there's this ancient tradition uh, going back to medieval ages that says that Jesus is our mother, especially what he does at the cross when they uh, put the spear in him and blood and water both come out. This is Jesus birthing a new humanity into the world, a new community, even bigger than a community though, a new way of of being in the world. And uh, so ancient, theologians would call Jesus our mother because he brings mm-hmm. a new way of being. So uh, motherhood is very feminine and um, I don't want to take that away from mothers, but no. uh, fathers can, or men can also act as mother types in the world as well. So, well, I, well, I do wish you a happy mother's day, Adam. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, and yes, I, I think you have a very mothering personality oh, as well. well um, but like yeah, and uh, right, you're you're absolutely right. I mean, some of the most beautiful theology um, talks about Jesus as our mother, and uh, among them, Julian of Norwich is one of my one of my favorites. She she yes. writes about the motherhood of Jesus so eloquently. Um, yes. So. Uh, yeah. And I don't, I don't want to like. I fear as I'm saying this that I'm mansplaining. Oh, I, I don't want you to. I okay. don't think so. Okay, I good. I'll take so. that from I, you, Lindsay. I don't want you to worry about about that because I know that um, that your respect for women and your respect for mothers um, is coming through. And uh, the fact is, not all men would want to be considered motherly. So. I think the fact that you do shows a deep, a deep respect and understanding for for women and for the job of motherhood. So. Okay, Thank, that makes me feel better. Thank you, Lindsay. That was awesome. Okay, uh, but this is also Good Shepherd Sunday, and uh, our passage, the lectionary, uh, uh, is is a three year cycle, and on Good Shepherd Sunday it goes like John chapter ten, is where our passage comes from. And this is kind of the Good Shepherd passage where Jesus talks about himself as the Good Shepherd. Uh, But it's a lot of verses in this chapter. And so I think in year A, the first year, uh, Jesus comes out and says, I'm the Good Shepherd. And then after that, uh, he talks about kind of what it means to be the sheep and the shepherd and stuff. Uh, But um, so earlier in the passage, Jesus says, I am the Good Shepherd. And it's Mm -hmm. important to know. Uh, I think for us, this is kind of fun because when Jesus talks about himself as the good shepherd, it's kind of in comparison to actually bad shepherds. Yeah. And what's happening here is a reference to the prophet Ezekiel, where he talks about the shepherds of Israel and what they're supposed to do. 
And Ezekiel, it's very clear that the shepherd is the king, the political rulers of Israel, and they're not doing their job. Their job is to care for those who are on the margins, those who are weak, those who are vulnerable. And so when Jesus takes up good shepherd language, he's he's being political Mm -hmm. (laughs) In, in, in the ways of Ezekiel and the ancient prophets. What is a shepherd supposed to do? What are the rulers of the kingdom of Israel, of whomever, what are they supposed to do? Uh, they're supposed to care for people like a shepherd cares for sheep. And Jesus yes. is saying, I am, I am the model for this. So Jesus says, don't look to Herod <laughs> for what a good shepherd is supposed to do. Look, I'm the model. So look to me. Right, right. Well, there's, there's a lot more to be said about shepherds and sheep. Um, and I mean, I think it's actually perfect for Mother's Day as well. Um, mothers and and fathers and people who care for children. I mean, certainly the the image of rounding children up and hurting them in a particular direction definitely comes to mind. But um, just also love, tenderness, affection. Um, um, yeah. And I, I think we should go ahead and read the passage and then talk about talk more about shepherds and sheep. I like it. Let's do that. All right. All right. I'll go ahead and read verses 22 through 30. At the time the feast of dedication took place at Jerusalem, it was winter and Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. But you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Jesus makes some big promises there. Yes, he also he also says, you are not among my sheep, which, as a universalist, I have a problem with. Oh. Um, um, yeah, I mean, what, what do you think about that? I, I don't well, want to dwell on that completely, but um, it just, that's the first thing that strikes me here. Um, and I'm not 100% sure what to make of it. Well, why aren't they of, why, why aren't they his sheep? Because um, I'll, an- I'll answer the question. Okay, go ahead. They aren't his sheep because in the present moment, they are not listening to his voice. Right. Yes. So so this when you talk about like universalism, Mm -hmm. uh, you're talking about like um, extended period of time, (laughs) I guess. Uh, And what Jesus is talking about is this present moment. You are not my sheep because you are not listening to my voice. Right. So that's, I, th- that's true. I, so uh, there's a very present uh, aspect to this. What are you doing right now? Because right now matters. Are you listening to the ways in which I am telling you that we need to be shepherds and care for the sheep? Or are you looking out for your own interest? Are you not caring about the sheep? Are you distracted from the sheep? If so, then then you're not. You're not right now at the present moment. You're not part of Jesus's flock. You're wandering off into different directions. And and here's the thing: like for me, uh, there are times when I am not part of Jesus's sheep. This is this is a criticism uh, not of the Jewish people. This is a criticism of the followers of Christ as much as it is for anyone else. Because there are times when I fail to live to live into this. I mean, the other thing that you have to be very careful about in this passage is and with John in particular, is an anti-Semitic reading. Um, Just previous to this, uh, in verses 19 through 21, 
uh, John says that the Jews were divided because of the words that Jesus was saying. And right. there were some who loved what Jesus was saying, and there were some who didn't like what Jesus was saying. And I imagine that if Christians actually took the words of Jesus seriously, that we would be divided too. Absolutely. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. I mean, these are, you know, it, it does say there was division among the Jews. It might have, it might as well have said there is division among his listeners. Mm -hmm. And it's telling us that his listeners were Jewish because he was Jewish, you right. know, and those are the, you know, he is Jewish. That is the context in which he is speaking. So, um, and it's the Jewish context is so important mm -hmm. uh, because part, partly because the festival of dedication, which is when this takes place, is uh, is Hanukkah. That's what yeah. we, we call Hanukkah. Right. And um, uh, back in Jesus's day, um, Hanukkah was a kind of a, a time of remembering the great rebellion of um, against an empire that was controlling uh, Israel at the time, and uh, the Maccabees revolted. And so there's kind of always this kind of expectation that a new king, a new messiah would come in and do the same thing that the Maccabees did and throw Rome off of our backs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and Jesus is saying it's not going to look like that. Right, right. So, but but the, the people are saying, hey, man, if you really are the shepherd, if you really are the Christ, just come out and tell us. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is saying, I've told you with my actions what yeah. it looks like, right? Yeah. There's, there's mm -hmm. like the political implications of this passage are huge and they're also easy to miss because where is Jesus when he's doing this? He's at Solomon's porch, Solomon's portico. Mm -hmm. And who's Solomon? He's the son of David. Right. Right. And, and they're looking for crazy. a new, yes. they're looking for a new son of David. They call mm -hmm. Jesus the son of David. And Jesus says the son of David is going to look much, much different. Right. Right. I mean, I love the metaphor of the shepherd itself. Um, I think, I think though that, you know, we've been born on this side of Jesus's life. I think the whole metaphor of the shepherd being one who tends the sheep, um, you know, the sheep, you know, were led by the shepherd and they were led, you know, they were tended in the fields, they were cared for, they were fed, and then they were led to sacrifice. I mean, you know, it's, the shepherd would 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 gain their trust and and lead them to be sacrificed. We don't think of it that way now because we think um, because we think of the good shepherd who tends the sheep forever. So um, Jesus kind of reinvents the whole concept of shepherding. It's not building you up. To, it's not building anyone up to be a victim to perpetuate a system. It's identifying with the victims themselves and changing the whole system that creates victims, changing it from one that, you know, changing a system of sacrifice into a system of love. Um, I mean, it's, it's, Yeah, it's I mean, right. yeah, that's an excellent point. And it's right there in the text because Jesus says, uh, I have not, Jesus does not say, I have come to, to sacrifice them and give them death. But then after that, they'll have eternal life. Right. He just goes straight to, I, I will give them eternal life. Mm -hmm. And eternal life, we often think of as something that you get after you die. But again, for Jesus, these, these are very present conditions. Eternal life is what Jesus wants to give us now. Mm -hmm. Right. This this is like the meaningful life. This is this is the life that's worth living. And that's what Jesus wants us to give mm -hmm. and, and the, to give to one another and that he wants to give us. Right. And it's right. not, as you say, about sacrifice. It's about or death. It's about life here in the present. Yes. Yes. It's, it is about life here in the present. Um, but calling the people sheep. Is not about these are mindless um you know the, these are 
they've completely given up their will to me so that they don't think for themselves, they don't act for themselves, they just they just follow. I mean, we have that connotation with sheep now, like we say, oh, they're a bunch of sheep following. And unless we're talking very specifically about Jesus, it's almost always negative when you call someone a sheep. It's It's kind of funny because in church, we talk about ourselves as the sheep following the shepherd. But in any other context, we talk about sheep with an air of disdain. But he's not talking just about mindless followers. He's talking very specifically, he's using a metaphor very specifically to mean those who, I mean, sheep were sacrificed. That is part of the point. Jesus is standing with those who were victims. The, the victims of sacrificial systems hear his voice. The victims of sacrificial systems listen to him because they are the ones um, who recognize him as one of their own, which means they recognize him also as someone who's oppressed, someone who is, um, you know, someone who is marginalized. They see all of this in Jesus, and they see him still showing a way to healing, showing a way to love and um, and an abundant life that they had been deprived of. So, yeah, I mean, I think the other the other point to be made about sheep is that sheep are, I mean, are vulnerable. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. that's exactly what you've been saying. Uh, they're going, they're likely to be sacrificed. Uh, but here Jesus is saying, uh, God is not going to sacrifice you. I'm not going to sacrifice you. Uh, life is not guaranteed. Somebody else might come along and sacrifice you because you're vulnerable. But I, you are, I am going to keep you, your soul safe. I, I mean, that's kind of the tricky part of this passage because Jesus says, mm -hmm. uh, and no one will snatch it out of my father's hands. No one will snatch the sheep out of my father's hands. Well, 11 of the 12 disciples, were killed or right. and, and John was sent into exile. So they were snatched away. But is Jesus here talking about like your eternal soul or your spirit or your, they'll never be able to catch your faith away from you. Or I don't know what exactly he's, he means there because it's risky. This, this. Yeah. Of faith. Well, I think James Allison really helped me understand it. Um, and it's still not anything I can really put in the best words. Um, but to live as if death were not. So that, um, so that what we see as a final barrier is just broken down um, and dissolved. So, you know, live now as if, as if death were not. Live now without the fear um, the fear that holds so many of us back and the fear that makes us try to separate ourselves from the vulnerable, the fear that, no. um, yeah, fear that makes us not only not want to be vulnerable, but like a world of scarcity in which there have to be losers and it can't be me. So I, I actually want there to be losers because um, their loss is my gain. To do away with all of that and to live as if death is not a barrier at all because Jesus makes it not a barrier at all. You know, that doesn't mean we won't die, but it means that it, it's just, it's not the final, like, concrete wall that it used to right. be. It's oh. just like a, it's just an open doorway. Hi, everyone. At this point in the conversation, Lindsay just kind of disappeared from my screen. I couldn't see her and I couldn't hear her. So fortunately, we were right at the end of our conversation on the Gospel of John. And uh, who knew? Good Shepherd Sunday and Mother's Day all on the same day. It was really helpful for me to talk this, this through with Lindsay and with the people who made comments on the live show. Uh, so if you have any comments or questions, you can feel free to put them here in the comment section. And uh, 
hope you can join us next week on the Raven Foundation Facebook page as we continue our journey through Easter with Easter 5C. So until then, peace be with you. Bye-bye.